Right now I'm showing you how to make a uh, some bread dough clay. People have been asking about it. Basically what I'm using is some stale bread. It wasn't moldy, it just had a smell to it and wasn't quite edible anymore. I'm removing the crust off of the bread and I'm going to add one teaspoon of white I'm using Elmer's multi-purpose glue but you can use any white glue that dries clear and I'm using one teaspoon per slice of bread and I'm using two slices of bread you see I added the glue and I'm gonna mix it up it's gonna be a little messy at first that's my cat handsome's tail in the way don't worry he wasn't harmed in the making of this clay <laughs> um, so here I am, I'm kneading it up. I've speeded up the video because this is sort of a process that not, not that it takes a long time, but I think you get the idea by looking at it. And I had to cut down 40 minutes of video into a much smaller video so that it would fit here on YouTube. So I'm kneading the dough on my counter. And so far, um, I just put the glue. Now I'm putting a little bit of glycerin in my hand. I less than a teaspoon and I'm using it for both slices of bread that I had created and that just kind of gets it a little bit more um, porcelain like and it gets it off your hands and it's not as sticky it's more dough like more like clay I'm kneading it in kneading it in squeezing it you know distributing it throughout the whole entire clay that I'm creating and I just want to make sure that it's nice and uniform. You'll feel the clay when it's right. You'll know it. You can just feel it. And it feels a lot like polymer clay or Play-Doh. Um, even better than Play-Doh, I think. I mean, my personal opinion of it. So I've gone ahead now, and I've created the dough, and I'm just about done making it. And I'm cleaning off my surface. I'm using a regular wet wipe and I've kind of broke up the clay well, I'll put down the clay I'm sorry I put it down so that I can clean the, the counter and my hands and what I'm doing is I'm taking food coloring this is food coloring that you buy in your grocery store the primary colors the common ones yellow green blue and red I'm cutting the dough in uh, into five different pieces. I'm do I know I have four different colors, but I'm going to take red and yellow and make orange. You can also do red and blue and make purple. So what I'm doing is I'm taking each one of those little pieces of bread dough clay that I made and I'm coloring them. I just put a few drops of food coloring into the bread dough. I'm distributing it throughout the clay so that it's uniform in color and not streaky or stripy looking. And then I'm putting it into a Ziploc bag until I'm done doing all of them. You want to keep the unused clay in a Ziploc bag that's airtight so that it doesn't dry out until you use it. Some people wish to keep their clay in the refrigerator. I used my clay over two days time and I did not. I just left it room temperature on the counter you know, with the AC running in my house. So here I'm making the yellow. And you'll see if you notice, even though I sped up the video, that my hands are inundated with ink. It came off quite easy. It was not hard to get off. It didn't stain my hands permanently, just so you know. And here I'm making the green or the darker, you know, the darker green and blue colors. I know one I made is blue and it looks green. It's just darker. My intention was blue, though. And now I'm making the green. Okay, so that was the blue one that I created. But yeah, it looks green, just like a really dark green, even when what I made is was completed. So I'm going ahead, like I said, I'm mixing up the dough. And I'm almost done with the last piece of clay. And my hands are really, really ucky. <laughs> Is that a word? Okay. Okay. Here I am showing you the clay, how I have it in the bag, and I have some molds that I made with Amazing Mold Putty from either Buttons or Charms. And I'm taking some of the clay and I'm putting it down into the thing, and I'm making now a heart. It's a beautiful heart with a little filigree design on it. And I um, 
I have another little smaller heart that I created as well and ladybugs and a few other molds that I have had laying around that I created for use with polymer clay. They worked wonderful with this clay and the detail that it picked up is really really awesome. I really like it. So I just keep grabbing molds that I have and I keep using different colors of clay and I just keep making different heart shapes and whatever I had molds of. So basically what you see me here doing is just taking out some clay, rolling it in my hand, making it malleable once again and then putting it together and here I took yellow clay mixed with a little bit of red which made like a um, jade kind of looking to me and I've added it to the red so I have two sided heart. I have one red side, one yellow side. I'm going to glue them together. See like you know, unlike polymer clay with any like cold porcelain clay or air dry clay you want to add some glue or some water. Here I added a little bit of Aileen's tacky glue so the two sides would stick together and I'm going to take an eye pin one with a head and I'm going to stick it through the bottom of the heart up through the center. Later after it's dry I'll make a loop and make it so it can hang and you can wear it. So here what I'm doing is I'm making some leaves and I just have a regular like dotting tool ball stylus. It's one of my like thinner ones of the few that I have. And I'm creating ridges and making a leaf. And I'm going to make three little leaves and then I'm going to make a rose using the red bread dough clay. And the reason I'm doing this is this is just to show that, you know, without the use of mold, you can use this type of clay for making things by hand. And I really, really love the way that I was able to work with the clay and the way it just kind of comes together and it takes shape. It takes texture really well. And the tool that I'm using to create the uh, leaves and the ridges on the leaves really worked well. And you see me here making the little veins on the leaf. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put those three together. I'm going to add some Aileen's Tacky Glue to each of the three edges. And um, then I'll add the rows that I'm continuing to make right now. Kind of got a little ahead of myself. But here I am. I'm taking a little ball of red clay. I made a ball, a piece of it, and made a ball flattened it out in the palm of my hand and then I rolled it up. I'm actually going to do this step twice because I made the rose and then I squished it up and showed you another way that you can make the rose making the petals more uniform. So here you just take and each little piece you make a piece, make a little ball, flatten it in your hand. It's okay if the edges are fluted that makes for a more realistic petal and then just add it to what you're already creating and flute the edges a little bit to make it a little bit more realistic like a rose. So again I'm making another petal and flattening it in my hand and I'm going to add it to what I previously have created with the other petals making the rose. And here's the last petal. And again, adding it to what I previously created. You can make your rose as large or as small as you want. You can use as many petals as you like. I usually suggest anywhere from five or six petals. Here I take a scissor and I cut off the end and make it flat. I can use the excess to make additional petals. Or I may decide that I don't need any more petals, but I added the petal anyways just to show. Made it a little thicker. And now I'm going to crush it up and show you another way that you can make the petals uniform. So you just roll it up, roll your clay together. I'm going to roll it into a snake after you get it all mashed together good. As you use this clay, you'll see it, it's not, you, know, you want to try to use it as quickly as possible. But anyways, I roll it up into a snake and I take my scissor and I just cut pieces off of it with the scissor. 
Each one of those pieces is going to become my petals of my rose. I take my first piece, ball it up in the palm of my hand, flatten it out, and roll it up into the center rose, the, the very first piece of the rose, the center. And I mess with the edges a little bit to give it that little bit more of a realistic fold to it. And there's the center. Now taking another piece, as you can see, I proceed to make my next petal. For you, you might find, depending on your clay, how long you've had it out or how long you've taken to use it, you might want to add some moisture to it and there's some glue. Mm, my dog's banging things in the background. Um, so that, that your petals will stick together. I didn't really use any glue in between, and I have no problems with the rose that I created. It seems to be very, very sturdy. So I'm continuing to build up my rose, creating petals and adding it all the way around. You want to overlap your petals. You don't want them one on top of the other. It won't look right. So, don't know exactly at that moment what I was doing, but uh, here I'm making the last of the rose petals that I'm adding to my rose. I want to use all, all the clay that I have out so I don't have to put any of it back, obviously. I tried to keep my hands within the camera's view so you can see what I was doing. And this seems to be my last petal that I was creating. And I'm rolling around the bottom part of it so that all the petals stick together and I'm cutting it off with the scissor. And now it's ready to stick on my leaves. So I'm going to take my leaves, and here's where I take a little bit of my Aileen Tacky Glue. Add a dot of glue to the larger ends, uh, ends of the petals. And I just add my rose right on top. It laid flat right on top of the leaves since I cut it with the scissor. And there you have it. My little rose and its leaves. And just set that aside to dry. Now here, everything is dry, and I'm showing you all the things that I had created, the molds, two hearts that I had put together with the eye pin that I put through it and all the little things that I made some of the molds the rose that I made without the mold I kind of dropped it and show how nice and sturdy it is it didn't break it's quite sturdy and I made some baskets and some other little rose mold things that I had and I was going to turn them into rings I have some dragons there I show some pictures later in the video that you can really see the, how it takes to detail. It's amazing. I really like the finish. It's nice and smooth. The ones I've made in the past were like so easy to use acrylic paints on and paint. I have not painted these. At least not in this video. I'm just showing you. But look at the detail. And there's like a tiger and another flower and some stuff. A lot of these molds I make with buttons that I have. So if you have any buttons or charms laying around, you can make your own molds and recreate them. And I'm showing the back of them, showing just how 
smooth the stuff is. I kind of sped it up so you really don't notice it as well as my little skull. I love my little skull. So yeah, and there's the rose that I created. And you can see the leaf that I made and the fish that I made with the different color fins and the face. The little nose is different colored. And here is the beautiful detail of my dragon. I love dragons. And I really love that dragon mold that I have. And then the heart that I made. And then on the one side it's red with the little filigree pattern as it is in the mold. And the other side I did yellow with little specks of red. Which didn't really get picked up too well in the camera. But to me looked like jade. <laughs>